Welcome to Ask a Pastor, the podcast where you can ask the pastor, well, anything. In this episode, Pastor Chip Stevens is joined by one of the ministry team at First Baptist Jackson to answer your question. Now let's join Chip and his guest in the studio. Hey, we want to welcome you to episode two of our Ask a Pastor podcast. And I'm really excited because this time I get to ask Mike the question. <laughs> Last time he was peppering me with questions. Yeah, that's right. Now I get to bring it over yeah, to him. Okay. And so we do, by the way, appreciate you submitting questions yeah. to us for us to be able to ask any way we can help you. We certainly uh, want to be able to do that. So, yeah. Mike, here's a question for you. All right, lay it on me. Kind of give us a little insider perspective on worship planning. I mean, this is something that, you know, you and I do it together, but it it, it kind of, I mean, I give you a passage and then you begin the worship planning Mm -hmm. process. But what goes into the thinking of worship planning? I mean, it's not, it's not just a random thing that comes together. No, it's not. And it's not something that just happens on Saturday night before Sunday morning. (laughs) Thank goodness. It's a whole lot that goes into planning the worship around here. And we're so blessed at our church to have this rich heritage of worship For and sure. music ministry here in that worship context. And so, so one, for one thing, there, it, it's like uh, putting a chef in a kitchen that has all kinds of spices and meats and stuff. You got the tools. Because yeah. it's all here. I mean, yeah. we've got musicians of uh, unbelievable caliber and also great spiritual people and yeah. leaders. And so what a, what a great privilege it is. So the first thing that I do, and I know you know this, but just for your benefit, is I'm studying alongside of him. I, we don't study together, but I, I, we're blessed to have a pastor here. First of all, that's, that's not just giving us good ideas about good living, but he's telling us what God's word says. And, and that's really the starting place of worship. I, my, my one sentence definition of worship is that worship is a response to the revelation of God. Yeah. And the revelation of God is primarily through the written word of God and, and specifically through the person of Jesus Christ. He's the ultimate revelation of God mm. himself, but the word of God is how we understand who he is and who God is. And our worship is a response to that. So we're not worshiping to get God to do something for us, although he certainly does. We're worshiping in response to what he has done for us and what he is doing in our lives. So worship is a response to revelation, which means the starting place of worship is is his word. And of course, Chip, you plan your preaching out way yep. in advance. You're studying all the time. You're not just getting up sermons. You're mm-hmm. you're working through God's word in a systematic kind of way. Right. And I'm aware, you've made me aware that here's where I'm headed, here's where I'm going, here's the passage that I'm gonna be focused on. And you've given me weeks and weeks of notice about that. What I'm doing every week uh, as we tape this, you're getting ready to preach in Ephesians 5. Yep. And I'm studying Ephesians 5 this week. Mm-hmm. I spent some time in the scripture this morning. I'm, I'm trying to get inside the text and understand what it's saying. I don't always know exactly the angle you're going to take, but, but you're so true to the scripture. I've got a really good idea where you're going. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to I want to be saturated with God's word myself so that mm-hmm. I'm not just trying to put a music thing on top of and hope it matches. I'm actually wanting to get in the flow of what God is saying through his word. Yeah. And so it starts for me with preparation in the word of God. I always tell ministers of music through the years as I've trained them is you are no less. Re- I'm no less responsible to this book than you are. That's right. And so I better be in this thing and be studying along with you. And then, then I begin to imagine songs and moments in worship. So I always think, I'm always very sensitive that when we start, when that, when the downbeat happens, whatever we start with, it needs to be worship. Mm -hmm. So you'll find in our worship services, we're not going to start the service with the announcement of the Mm -hmm. after church fellowship that's happening at somebody's house, or we're not going to be promoting an activity. The activities are fine and important. They're important part of a church. But we're not going to start our worship with information. Yeah. We're going to start with revelation. We're going to, mm-hmm. we're going to be, what does God's word say? Very often I'll start with a scripture or I'm starting with a song that's very scriptural. I don't want to get into a pattern of the first song has to be a hymn. The second song has to be a, I, I reject patterns like that. Right. I, I want to say, what is the starting place of worship this week? Sometimes it's going to be energetic and loud. Sometimes it's going to be very soft and reflective. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's going to be prayerful. Sometimes it's going to be joyful. It's going to be all over the map in terms of what it is, but it's going to start in this call to worship kind of a mode mm-hmm. where I'm calling people in, inviting people to engage, and mm-hmm. it's going to start with revelation. And then we're going to, we're going to see the elements. You'll see. You'll see revelation. You'll see thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. 
which is an important part of worship. It's, yeah. a, it's an essential part of worship. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving, the Bible says. Enter his courts with praise. So it's going to have thanksgiving. It's going to have a big component of prayer in it. Because mm-hmm. when you see... Um, yeah, we've noticed that. Yeah. We've when noticed you see, that since you've been here. Yeah. When you see worship, you see this engagement. Jesus, yeah. I, sometimes I wish he had said, my house will be a house of music. <laughs> and sometimes you may have thought, my house will be a house, house of preaching. Of preaching. Yep. Yeah. But that's not what he said. That's he not, said, my house right. will be called a house of prayer. Yeah. And if boy, if I could say one thing to the people of First Baptist Jackson, it's my desire that when somebody asks you about your church, you'll be able to say, well, I'll tell you one thing we do. We know how to pray. Yeah. Uh, and that'd, be, that'd be so awesome if, if people could say that. You know, you make, a great, you make several great points. Mm. But regarding prayer, one of the things that, you know, you hear from people, um, and not really so much people from church, but you hear from other pastors or whatever, yeah. you hear people lament the demise of prayer meeting. Yeah. And what they're talking about is a Wednesday night gathering of prayer, which truthfully oftentimes wasn't an hour of prayer. An, it could be an announcement time. It, it really. could be an announcement time. It could <laughs> yeah. be a hospital list and then a short prayer. Yeah. But here at First Baptist Jackson, Sunday has become a prayer meeting. Yeah. And so here at First Jackson, prayer meeting is actually increased in attendance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And well, so that, that's, a, that's an incredible... Because we are praying every Sunday yeah. in worship service, and it's a concentrated prayer. Love no that. No question. Yeah. And and I, will, I always want that prayer time in our worship services. And a lot of people have commented to, the, to me about this. And there have been a few, not not in a mean-spirited way, but just in a questioning way, said, why do we spend so much time in prayer? Yeah. But I've had a lot of other people say, thank you for, yeah. for the yeah. pace of that. I, of all the ways we could describe that prayerful time in our worship time, unhurried should be one of them. Mm, mm. You know, I, I'm telling you, I'd rather lose a song yeah. and have God's people praying. Right. Uh, and so, and, and I've been really encouraged by several of our staff taking part of that. And my yeah. intention is more and more of our staff to mm-hmm. lead in that. And even some of our lay people to lead in that. Um, it, our church would be so well served if we became known for, for being a church of prayer. House of prayer, yeah. And, and so, but our songs, in, in fairness, mm-hmm. many of our songs are prayers. Mm-hmm. If you, as a matter of fact, um, it, our singing is praying. We are praying when we sing, mm. you know. And if you'll look at the lyric, if you'll take some of the lyrics of things we sing and just read the lyric, it, it turns out really that's just a prayer. Yeah. Like like a song we might sing, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Well, you say, well, that's a song lyric. Well, actually, if you boil that all the way down, that's a prayer <laughs> yeah, that we're praying. Right. Uh, many, many of the things we'll sing are prayer. So, so very prayer-oriented, uh, certainly worship uh, centered around the Word of God. And I believe that revelation, I talked about it, revelation and response. Sometimes the revelation is in the song mm-hmm. and the response could be in the sermon. Sure. So here's what the song says. I think about a song like we sang recently, Yet Not I But Christ Through Me. Mm-hmm. It's just chock full of revelation. Mm-hmm. That whole song is nothing but theology. And then you get up behind that and preach a message that, that really, in essence, is a practical implication of what we just sang. Yeah. But often the preaching of God's word becomes revelation and the psalm becomes response to that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the response is adoration, thanksgiving, confession, all of these things. And hopefully our worship services here don't feel like thing, 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 thing that's all kind of mashed together like a concert might be. But it's one thing that that has all these different components that move in and out. So we give, you talk about the secret sauce of how we plan worship behind the scenes. I'm thinking about where it starts and a, a flow of thought that goes all the way to the end of it. And it's one arc of an experience where we're, mm-hmm. it's revelation and response. And, that, and that's the goal. I heard somebody um, one time talking about worship and, and saying that you, you, you look at the word worship like worth Sure. Ship. That's the English you know, you, tradition of the source of the word. Yeah, you, you worth, are worth ascribing to God yep. his worthiness when we yep. come in worship. And so what you've described is, is it sounds to me like as you're planning a worship service, you're wanting to begin with just ascribing to God the Absolutely. glory to his name. I mean, Absolutely. we want to praise him for who we, we want to thank him for what he's done. Yep. And then we also want to prepare our hearts and minds for what he has to say through prayer. And sometimes songs are a little bit, maybe prayer songs and songs that are reflective, 
But that is an act of ascribing his worthiness too. When we recognize we need to hear what he has yeah, to say. Absolutely. We want that revelation. Absolutely. And we want to be in a position to respond. Absolutely. And hopefully when we plan the worship here, we are putting in the mouths of God's people responses to what God yeah. is saying. And their spirit engages and they join into the song, not just audibly and not just physically, but they join in spiritually with this beautiful expression mm -hmm. of the body of Christ here mm -hmm. at First Baptist Jackson responding to the revelation of God. I want to address something right here that yeah. a lot of people don't know. Yeah. Okay. But maybe they've noticed it. And it's and it's when you came here, you, you met with me, we were doing some worship planning, and you said, Listen, I really want to change the title invitation time yep. to time of response. Right. And so we've sometimes I hadn't sometimes I've forgotten to do that. Yep. I'm so I'm sorry about that. It's old habits. Oh, but I tell you, I don't I know, know. I know. <laughs> but we talked last week about sometimes we made mistakes and so <laughs> yes, I'm still exactly. making them. And I make them too. But 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 Explain why. Oh, yeah. Why does it matter changing the words, yeah. invitation time to time of response? Well, what a great question, and thank you for that, because this really is in my heart uh, to do. So we've, we've sung, we've prayed, we've often had, you know, we've been led spiritually and musically, and you've preached, and now we come to something we call the response time. When you think about the, the old invitation model, mm -hmm. We would sing a song very often. I could, I could name them. And a lot of people here would know <laughs> yeah, it's going right. to be Just As I Am yeah. or Softly and Tender right. or Have Not Our Own Way, yeah. Where He Leads I'll mm -hmm. Go. All wonderful songs, by the way. Yeah. And, and you actually, a uh, lot of churches, I, I did this years ago. A lot of churches had this list of about eight or 10, and it's going to be off that list. Yeah. And, and, and the old invitation model would say, we're going to sing a song so that the people that need to do something Will, can come down during this moment yeah. and they can make a profession of faith or they could join our church or they could surrender to missions, right. whatever. But the invitation song was for those people to do that thing. Well, what we're trying to, what we'd like to see happen here, aiming for week after week, is a response time that's not for those people to do that thing they need to do, mm -hmm. but for me mm -hmm. and every one of us to respond yeah. to what God has said that day. Yeah. So the response song, and that's why I will pick a song. Sometimes I've done this lately, and you haven't told me to quit, so I, I'm <laughs> assuming it's okay. But I'll even pick a longer song, and we'll yeah. do the whole song. Yeah. And and nobody's come down because people are like, oh, is he going to do another verse of that? And nobody, well, nobody's down there. Why is he still going? Yeah. As if all we're trying to do is just give cover for the few people that need to make a decision. No. That's not what this song is designed to do. This song is our corporate response to all that God has said and is mm -hmm. saying right there in that moment. So mm -hmm. the response time is not for those people to do that. It's for all of us in the room to respond to the great revelation that God's yeah. already given to us. That's why it's my, my, my prayerful desire that in our response time that we'll see people begin to respond in ways that aren't those just, I want to join the church or I need to make a profession of faith. But this person comes in there at the altar and this person comes and, and prays over here and that person is responding. Or maybe in the response time, somebody goes across the room, of course, COVID protocols, but <laughs> goes, goes across the room and begins to pray with someone. I mean, in other words, yeah. the response, not just being this perfunctory way to end the service, but something that the entire body of believers right. become part of. As a matter of fact, I, you and I talked about this once. Um, it would tickle me to death if the sermon was in the middle of the service hmm. and we had as much singing after it as we do before it. Yeah. For the very purpose of what I'm just, sure. what I just sure. talked about. We so that, that. We're, we're, we're responding to the revelation of God. I, you know, I think about yeah. the guys in Genesis, you know, Abraham and yes. of course Isaac. And uh, what you see in particularly in the Old Testament scripture with those saints is that when, when, when there was a revelation from God, they built an altar. They did. <laughs> they you know? did. They I mean, they, they marked it. Yeah. And, 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 and they wanted to remember that forever. Yep. And so you're right. I mean, any time we have an encounter with God, God always demands a response. Absolutely. He always. It's not just a trust in Christ for the first time or join the church or Absolutely. go to the mission field. There are other things that he's calling us to do. Sometimes it's changing the way that we live. Sometimes it's making a decision that we're going to be better at this or that. Sometimes it's, um, you know, I, I need to be teaching a Sunday school class. I mean, yeah. it, it can be all sorts of things. Sometimes the response, I think, Mike, can, can simply be, 
you know, as we're singing this song of response, I need to sing this one with conviction. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, I believe in what I'm saying. Absolutely. And so I love the idea of creating a culture where there's an expectation that everybody in the room is going to respond somehow. Yeah. It doesn't mean everybody's walking down the aisle, yeah. but everybody is has heard from God Absolutely. and is responding to Him, however God's led them. Well, the truth of the matter is, Pastor, not to get all Baptist evangelists on this here, but everybody is responding. Yeah. One way or the other. One way or the other. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're either ignoring what God has been whispering in your heart the whole time, mm -hmm. or you are finding yourself in submission. You know, those, those times in my life when I find myself in His presence, and sometimes that's when I'm by myself, and sometimes it's in a room full of people. But when I, it's in those moments that God very often gives me very specific direction. Hmm. Might have had nothing to do with the sermon yeah. that day. But I'm in his presence and I'm here. I've heard him speaking and I've, I'm tuned in spiritually to him. And it'd be in a moment like that, that God gives me direction about something that I've been praying about. Yeah. Uh, and, and so we're saying, we're saying as people gather here, hopefully the word of God is being presented clearly and with, with authority, the authority that he brings to it. And the worship response is engaging and people are engaged in it and are in the room and, and not just putting a check mark by the spiritual things to do, but, but really engaged in worship in that atmosphere, man, that's mm -hmm. when lost people are, they see that. A person that doesn't know Christ right, right. can see the engagement, can see God's people responding in worship. Yeah. And that actually even makes his voice even easier to discern mm -hmm. for those that are maybe never mm -hmm. met him before. So mm -hmm. it's, it's that thing when Jesus says, if I'm lifted up, if, if God's people will respond to me, then I'll draw people to yeah, me. Yeah. So, man, the exciting times of, in my life in ministry have been in those contexts when the body of Christ was engaged in response. Mm -hmm. And that becomes a spiritually charged atmosphere mm -hmm. That you and I aren't smart enough to manipulate, but <laughs> but right. God can Definitely do not. amazing things in His church when God's people respond to His word. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, I love the way that uh, you know the, the the key word is the word word. Yeah, I mean worship it's revolves around. It's the key. The word. I mean, every the music revolves around the word. The prayers revolve around the word. The preaching revolves around the word. Response time is response to the word. I mean, that's well, you know, what the music musicians' responsibility at that point. Is we don't have to make this better. That's exactly right. <laughs> it's already that's perfect. That's exactly right. Yeah. It's already perfect. Yeah. Our job is to get out of the way of it. That's exactly right. To present it clearly and get out of the way of it. So what does that look like practically for the musician? It means that we eliminate the distractions that poorly done music would be. Mm -hmm. Now think about, you know, if we just go out there and we don't hardly know this and we're just kind of fumbling our way through, it, it's not the negative artistic experience that our people are are affected by it's they're missing god's word right. we got in the way if our technology is not serving as well if our microphones aren't working right if you know if i mean only if the choir gets up and and mails it in one sunday mm -hmm. it's not well gosh we don't get a superior at the choir festival this weekend it's right. not no right. we're getting in the way of something yeah. that i don't and i don't want the responsibility no, of that so man. So everything we're doing is trying to put this in the centerpiece of it and, mm -hmm. and let the music and the corporate expression serve uh, yeah. God's Word and God's people's response to let it. Let the text do the talking. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That's God's it. Word is right. That's it. Listen, I, I hope it, this has been helpful for you. Help, help you to see that there is a purpose in the things that are planned, the worship services that are planned each and every Sunday. And so you can know as you come to church here at First Baptist Jackson that there is a, there is a purpose in all of that what we want you to do is we want you to hear God's voice. Yes, we want you right. to respond to Him, to be a disciple of Jesus Christ who is intentional about being used of Him to make disciples. Thank you again so much for joining us for this podcast. Hope that you'll join us again next week. And don't forget, send us in some questions. We'd love to help you with whatever you're asking uh, in your life. Thanks again. Do you have a question to ask a pastor? You can send it to us by visiting firstbaptistjackson.org slash APP or message us on social media. You can find us at FBJacksonMS on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and share it. Thanks again for joining us for Ask a Pastor.